you know, I always thought like Freddy versus Jason, um, while on, you know, I enjoyed that movie on a number of levels, I felt like, well, they, they can't really have an interesting double act because Jason doesn't talk, you know, but whereas Chucky and Freddy, you know, they can. So I would, I would really love to see that. Going into part two, everyone's been wondering how Chucky's aging curse will finally give him what he deserves. With Carolyn at Chucky's side, how do you think that apprenticeship and dynamic will play into that thematic idea of mortality in these next few episodes? Well, you know, as you say, I mean, we are the second half of the season really does focus on Chucky wrestling with his mortality. Um, I, I don't want to say too much about how Caroline figures into that. And, um, you know, I don't want to divulge too many spoilers but she does factor into it absolutely you know it's fun it, funny with that character of caroline the actress karina batrick who plays her uh, since season one i i didn't i it was not my plan originally to take this character on the journey that she's been on it's just that the actress is so excellent she's such a great little actor and she and it's and this is something that's true of watching all of the kid actors on the show and seeing them grow as performers um has been really interesting and fun so i saw with karina the opportunity to do something new something we hadn't done in the franchise which was to give chucky a child playmate who was not an innocent who who increasingly shared his um you know his evil bent so i thought i just bottom line is i knew that karina had it in her to play a great scary kid and that is its own subgenre of horror so i thought it would be fun to bring a little of that into chucky with their relationship and and i just i find their relationship kind of adorable you know yeah definitely she's like She's really perfect trying to balance those two different sides of her character. However, outside of Caroline, Jake, Devin, and Lexi have been dealing with their own personal storylines that clash into the larger picture of Chuggy's chaos in the White House. How do you think those dynamics of the main trio will shift also in these next few episodes? Well, I actually know exactly <laughs> how <laughs> dynamic shift. I don't have to speculate. Um, but... Uh, those dynamics do shift. Um, one thing that we have going on is that, you know, Jake and Devin, after in, in season two, they were kind of at odds, you know, over the issue of good Chucky, you know, kind of divide, threatened to divide them for a while. But they, by the finale there at the end of season two, that Christmas episode, they put aside their differences and come together. So in season three, you know, now they're 17 years old, going on 18. They're ready to take their relationship and their romance to the next level, you know, which we start to get into in that hilarious scene in, in episode three <laughs> when Miss Fairchild interrupts them, oh, yeah. <laughs> them the sex talk. Um, but, you know, but Chucky is or the issue of Chucky is just constantly interrupting them. So Chucky becomes that metaphor, you know, you know, the the path to to romance can be rocky sometimes for all kinds of reasons but in the case of jake and devin sometimes it's this killer doll that keeps bedeviling them so you know they fans will have that to look forward to, uh, to. and then lexi has her own um relationship budding with with grant the the president's son played by jackson kelly and, you know, she's kind of using him so far, you know, she's, you know, initially they thought like, oh, look at this guy, they look at his socials, and he's, you know, kind of an arrogant clown. And they go, okay, we'll just pretend to like him so we can get into the White House. And they do that. But now Lexi finds herself actually having feelings for him because they have they they bond over, you know, shared grief. They've both lost loved ones. So fans can look forward to what happens with that relationship as well. And, you know, as always on our show, Chucky might be a fly in the ointment. He doesn't Definitely. really like to see these kids happy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Killed all their parents. I have one really fun 
question. So in the gaming world, Chucky's been involved in games like Dead by Daylight. However, he hasn't really been seen alongside other icons like Freddy and Jason in Mortal Kombat. So would you want to see Chucky find his way into that universe? And if so, what do you think his moveset might be? Well, I mean, I definitely... I like in the movie realm and you know in the realm of filmed entertainment i would love to see chucky pair up with a fellow horror icon um i think that would be really fun and you know i have an idea that i've pitched publicly several times over the years about chucky and freddy which i think would be hilarious because they but you know they're both chatty you know i always thought like freddy versus jason um while on you know, I enjoyed that movie on a number of levels. I felt like, well, they they can't really have an interesting double act because Jason doesn't talk, you know. But whereas Chucky and Freddy, you know, they can. So I would I would really love to see that. I don't know if that is exactly the right answer to your question, though. I don't know. It's probably just like Mortal Kombat focus. If you'd like to see like Chucky enter the world of Mortal Kombat, maybe yeah yeah i don't honestly i don't know that much about it i'm a you know a little old to be a gamer or i, I missed a <laughs> little of that but um but yeah. yes i i would love to see chucky battling the his fellow icons oh i just love a good sequel don't you <laughs>